there are a few things I wish I knew earlier in my whiskey journey. So if you're getting into whiskey or you're already into whiskey, make sure you know these things. So the first thing I wish I knew earlier in my whiskey journey is that expensive or older whiskey doesn't mean it's a better tasting higher quality whiskey. A lot of my absolute favorite whiskies are quite young and quite affordable. I think Ralphie once said the trump card of scotch is its affordable quality and I agree. You don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on some whiskey in some fancy box to get good quality whiskey. There's so much great affordable whiskey out there. And the thing is with older whiskey as well, just because there's a really high number on it, that also doesn't mean that it's better whiskey. There's lots of examples where I actually prefer a younger age stage statement to an older age statement from a distillery. I think Aaron is a good example where I quite like the Aaron 18 more than the Aaron 21. And another example is with Isla Whiskey, I prefer the Kilhoman Loch Gorm or the Port Charlotte PAC over the Lager Verlin 16, which is a much older whiskey. It just shows you that a higher age statement doesn't always mean it's a better whiskey. There's so many other factors that come into play. And with expensive whiskies, it also doesn't mean that they're better quality. They often can be more expensive because they could be a limited release. They could be a rare bottling from a closed distillery. So it's telling you more about the history of the distillery than it does about the smell and taste or it could just be marketing hype. There's a lot of distilleries out there with massive marketing budgets and they'll have some elaborate story behind it, like it went to space or they put this barrel under the ground. Like it doesn't mean it's better whiskey. So what I would suggest is just try different brands, try different price points, try different whiskeys recommended from different sources other than just marketing departments. And that's a big part of my channel is I wanna help you find those affordable whiskeys. The second thing I wish I knew earlier in my whiskey journey is that my tastes change. I could have explored so much more whiskey if I knew this. As you might know, as I've said a few times on this channel, like when I first was introduced to single malt whiskey, I hated it. Like the guy who offered it to me, I was like, can I add Coke to that? And he's like, no, not this fancy whiskey. And so I was like, oh, well, I don't like whiskey. And it wasn't too, I went on a trip around Isla where some friends brought me along and I tried some smoky whiskeys and I think I went to Laphroaig and I was like, ah, oh, I think I like this. And I don't know if that's because I'd had lots of smoky food before and it just hid more of that spirit burn or something when I was getting into it. But even then, like I had someone else give me a Craig Alecky 13 to try and I was like, ah, oh, I obviously don't like this style of whiskey. I must only like smoky whiskey. So I just kept buying like Isla whiskeys, Lagerverlins, Laphroaigs, Kilhomans, and I didn't buy the non-smoky whiskeys. And it wasn't too kind of over the years that I was trying more and more like non-smoky whiskeys to the point now that a lot of my favorite whiskeys are those non-smoky whiskeys, funky whiskeys, those like more industrial whiskeys. So I think you just need to keep an open mind, try new whiskeys. I see so many like Instagram accounts where they just have McCallans or they just have Ardbegs, which is fine, it's your money. You, you spend it how you like, but I do wanna encourage you to try other types of whiskeys. I just think your whiskey journey is gonna be so much more fun and colorful if you can go down all these different roads. And if you want to explore a whiskey that might be outside of your normal kind of whiskey you normally try, uh, go watch my 15 Essentials whiskey video where I go through kind of like a lot of those different types of whiskeys and ways you can build your whiskey collection rather than just buying the same brand and different versions of basically the same whiskey. The other thing I wish I knew earlier in my whiskey journey is that knowing the cask it's aged in or the still that it's distilled with will tell you a lot more about how a whiskey will taste than knowing the whiskey region. And I think a lot of this is because we assume it'll be kind of similar to wine, like knowing where a wine is from, like say in Burgundy, for example, they don't even put on the label what type of grape it is. They just assume that if it's red, you already know that 99% of it's gonna be Pinot Noir. Whereas with whiskey regions, it can be a little bit helpful. Like if you know it's from Isla, like maybe it could be smoky. If it's from Speyside, maybe it's it's aged in some sherry casks and it's not PT. But there's just so many exceptions. I can think of distilleries that are exceptions to all of those. Like the Boonhaven 12 is a non peated whiskey from Isla. And so what I think is if you know the cask it's aged in, like is it aged in an ex-bourbon cask or is it aged in an ex-sherry cask? I would say two heavily sherried whiskies from two different regions will probably have more in common than two whiskies not aged in the same cask, but in the same region. And the other thing 
that goes a long way for understanding a whiskey is the still. They often say a still is the fingerprint of a distillery's character. But overall, just imagine like a taller still, like Glenmorangie, Glencadden with a line pipe that goes up, that's gonna give you a lighter style of whiskey. Whereas smaller stills, stills with like worm tubs, like Craig Allerkey, are gonna give you a, a bit more of a heavier, sulfuric type whiskey. And neither of these are good or bad, they're just different styles of whiskeys. But understanding the cask and understanding the still will be much more helpful in your whiskey journey than understanding which whiskey region the whiskey's from. So this one's a big one. The next thing I wish I knew when I was getting into whiskey is that don't trust the color of a whiskey, especially if on the bottling it doesn't say you no know, color and added or natural color. So when I was first getting into whiskey, this was an absolute shock because often I'll go to the bottle store and I'd see a really dark colored whiskey on the shelf and I'd be like, wow, that must be a really rich whiskey. I should get that. And it wasn't until later I learned that a lot of distilleries add E150A colorant. It makes a whiskey look a lot darker, which like, it doesn't make it any different than a Coca-Cola. Like you just can't trust the color and it just takes a lot of the fun out of it. Like Charles McLean often talks about how whiskey engages all your senses and engages the smell, engages the taste, engages the feel, like the texture, and engages even the sound when you open the cork of a bottle. Whereas sight can be, like you almost feel like you've been lied to. Why do distilleries add coloring? And it's exactly the reason I was going for darker whiskeys earlier in my whiskey journey because they think a lot of consumers will see a darker whiskey and think, oh, there must be a better whiskey. And as I've often said on this channel, don't judge a whiskey always by the color. Like a lot of lighter whiskeys, I think are fantastic. Think of like Glen Caddam 10, the Altmore 12, another like pale kind of straw colored whiskey. Great, no color added. But then some whiskeys that are really rich in color, I do really like as well. I think it's debatable about whether coloring actually changes how whiskey tastes. But what I'd say for you, if you do want to analyze whiskeys by the color, just for the fun of it, look for whiskeys that say no coloring added or natural color. A lot of distilleries now, they're making a point of that this whiskey hasn't had coloring added. This is a more natural product. So the next thing I wish I knew earlier in my whiskey journey is you shouldn't get all your whiskey info from one place. I think when I was first getting into whiskey, there wasn't like a huge sort of YouTube scene back then. So I would go to whiskey, blogs and it wasn't until later I realized like every single whiskey they talk about is like super positive and this is the best whiskey ever it could be some like non-age statements like $900 whiskey and they're like this is the most amazing thing you should buy it and they just said about everything it wasn't until later on I realized that a lot of these blogs are marketing driven blogs are run by big retailers so they've got incentive to sell more whiskey and a lot of marketing blogs they get all expense paid trips around the world and they get lots of free bottles and they've got incentives to write really positive things and I think there's an article I read once that without criticism it's just marketing if no one's ever criticizing a whiskey ever and I'm not saying people need to be super negative about whiskey I think you know everyone has different tastes and that sort of thing of course but if like it's always positive no matter what, isn't it just, that's just marketing. And when I was getting into whiskey, it was just super confusing because I only had so much money, I only had so much budget. I wanted to know what was the affordable quality. What could I find out there? So these days, I think there's like lots of places now you can find great reviews of whiskey, but not just one place. Like don't just listen to me either. Look at other YouTubers, go to like Reddit. And I'm also not saying that all blogs are bad. I think there's some really informative, like good blogs out there that tell you the history of a distillery, like future trends. There's a lot of good journalism out there as well. I'm just saying you need to eat the fish and leave the bones. Just because it's like on some official website doesn't mean that what it's saying is 100% correct. And this kind of leads on to my next thing I wish I knew is whiskey awards. There are some awards out there that's almost like the wine awards where like they just seem to give out, you know, they'll get a thousand entries and 900 of them will win something. And so they all slap their sticker on there. Hey, open your boxes. So just be careful of some of the whiskey awards out there. There's a few things you got to ask yourself, like how transparent is it? Like how many like awards do they end up giving out? I often find the less awards they give out the better. And this is why I like the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. There's thousands and thousands of people who input into that and it's all transparent and <laughs> you can see what people are voting up and that sort of thing. Obviously if you're into like random independent bottling single cast whiskies it's probably not as good but to get a gauge of what distilleries are good out there, what whiskies are generally pretty affordable and good value, it's a great place to start and that's generally what I'll trust over 
a lot of these ones that just seem to hand out awards left, right and centre. Not saying all of those are bad, some of them are really good and some of the people who run those awards, their pilots I do really trust, but it's something you do need to be a little bit skeptical about. And the last thing I wish I knew earlier in my whiskey journey is that whiskey is social. Alcohol, for all its bad things that it's done in society and thing, and that's why I always recommend quality over quantity. And scotch, to me, is the pinnacle of quality. There's nothing quite like sitting around like a fire with some friends and just talking about the whiskey and talking to each other. Like it's a social thing to do together. So I do recommend joining a whiskey club, find other whiskey geeks out there, have whiskeys alongside some of those like live stream YouTubers like Aquavit has a great V pub if you might not have any people near you to like talk about whiskey with. And there's so many times where I will be drinking whiskey with some friends of mine, a whiskey that I own the bottle of and it's nearly finished and now I'll be sipping it and they'll be like, oh, I'm getting watermelons. And I'll be like, watermelons? And I'll sip it. And then, oh, I get watermelons too. Never tasted it before. And it just enriches the journey. It's not just your perspective. Other perspectives can like completely open up new dimensions of how a whiskey tastes. So I do recommend that. But what are some of the things you wish you knew earlier in your whiskey journey? Write a comment down below. Thanks to my patrons. And above all, share and enjoy. Beauty.